Hey, welcome back. This is Anthony, and this is another episode where we are learning how to interact with Google Sheets API, specifically reading data, and now we're actually going to be writing data back to the sheet. So in the previous episodes, what we did, this is actually where we left off. We have a screen here on the right where we've got it, some dummy data in a spreadsheet, and then on the left, we've got a little website set up with a table that has the same data. So what we are able to do now is we can change anything over here and say, like, new name. I can change it on the right, and then if I reload the left, it will change to, oh, it didn't actually update, did it? There. Um, and it will update to new name. You see there? And that is all we were able to do in the previous videos. Now, what we are able to do is I added the save button, and we can save the data. So I'll just give you an example. Um, we'll just say sample save. If I save this now, See, now it says sample save over here on the right. That was actually very quick. Um, let's learn how to do that. So over here in the Sheets API page, uh, what we did last time is we went to the references, and we went to spreadsheet.values.get. So this is what we did last time. And if you're not caught up to where we're at yet, highly recommend you watch the first episode. That's going to show you how to build your project how to get your API key, how to get your credentials set up, and how to display that data, um, and actually use this code here, which we've already got set up in our project right now. Um, but for the sake of explanation for this video, basically what we did was we copied all of this code over, and we made a couple of minor changes to it, and I'll go over those here shortly. But now what we're really interested in is the update code. If we scroll down to the bottom, same thing. Browser is our JavaScript. And all of this stuff, with very few exceptions, is the same. So all of our authentication code is going to be the same because we authenticate the same way. So all we're really interested in is this portion up here at the top, make API call, where the difference now is it's dot values dot update versus dot values dot get, which is the difference between updating a sheet and reading the data from the sheet. So let's get straight to the code. And so we'll look at index, index2.php, actually. We'll look at that first. So that is our original code from the previous episode. So this is where we left off. We had make API call. We've got a spreadsheet ID. We've got a range that we updated. We updated the API key. We updated the client ID. And again, if you're not sure how to find this stuff, um, watch the first episode, and that'll teach you how to get this stuff, the information. It's a very short video. And the last thing that we did was we created a for loop which built the table. Um, this for loop gives name and ID of row and column based upon the iteration. And we're going to use that later to access the data and save it off to the sheet. So now, index.php, I've already got my changes in here. It'll save us some time. But basically, here's a change. Starting at the top, make API calls still the same, but we've added this action equals read. And this isn't necessary to make this work um, necessarily. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. This is just preventing me from having to make multiple functions. Ideally, you would want multiple functions, one for reading, one for writing, because as you segregate your code, it makes it easier to understand. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to keep it together and just keep it short and simple. Um, we moved our SSID up here to the top and put it in a variable because we're actually going to be using that in both the write and the read. Um, but you can see that the default action for make API call is read. So if I call this with no parameters, it's going to default down to not this one, but this one. All right, so this read from sheets, all of this code is exactly what we had in index2.php in our previous episodes. Um, I just condensed it down a little bit as far as deleting out the comments. Um, but literally, spreadsheet ID, range, it's all the same. This is what is new here, right? <clears throat> so the first thing that we do is we create in a multi-dimensional array. And what that array does for us is it's actually going through each one of our cells in our table, and it's assigning the value over to this variable called vowels, and that's why we were building the table the way we did, or we built the table the way we did, so that we could capture the values later. 
The next thing is the params. If you look at the params on the right side, the right has spreadsheet ID, range, value, input option. The read side has only spread I spreadsheet ID and range, so you can see that this is new. There are a few different options that you can put into this placeholder, um, but what I highly recommend you do is go out and you can read throughout this and you can see what the different options are and, and what they're for. So if you click value input option, it'll actually take you to a page that'll break down the different options here, explain what the differences are and all of that. So I'm not going to do that here today, um, but it is there. The value range body is here in the right portion, but it's not in the read because we are only going to need values when we're writing them. When we're reading them, we don't need them, right? So value range body is actually one of the parameters that we send through the update function call along with the parameters here. And that is all. Literally just once we set this up, um, most of this is copy paste from Google. All we really did was created this, put in our SSID range, and then that was it. So the rest of this stuff uh, comes default with our previous build that we've done. Um, if you're starting from scratch, then you're going to want to copy over all of the code from here, and you're just going to want to fill in the gaps. So you've got API key, you have to fill in, you got client ID, you have to fill um, well here and here and then the spreadsheet ID and the range, uh, but that's that's it. And so now, if we go over to here, I can go back again. I had sample save once, and now I've got um, another name. If I save that, you can see it says another name. It changed before I could even get over there, and that's it. Uh, down at the bottom, you can see that we've got a console.log, which is actually processing our response object. Um, so let me just go back to the code to show you where that's happening at. In index.php, under make API call, where we're writing the data, after the data is done being written, we come down to the request and we say then console.log, response.result. That is what you're looking at here. This is the response.result. It responds with the spreadsheet ID, the updated cells, and all of this information here. It tells you how many rows were updated. Um, but check this out. So there's six rows that are being updated, but I only updated one cell. Doesn't seem efficient, and you're right, it's not. Um, what you could actually do, if you'd like, is you could create a function just, just as an idea, right? So I've, I've already done this once before, but you could create a function called, say, update memory, and you could keep track of each individual cell that you change. So, you know, on change, you would update this guy based upon whatever ID has changed. And then you could call a, a batch update instead of just an update. And the batch update, update lets you do multiple different uh, ranges. So your ranges would be the individual cells and the update, the batch update, uh, would be the individual values. So if I changed one cell, I could literally target just one update as opposed to the entire sheet every single time. Um, not a big deal now for the sake of what we're doing, um, but if you've got you know 100 columns and 1,000 rows, but you only change one thing, you don't want to have this updating every single row when only one thing changes. Uh, so other than that, I mean, that's really it. And... If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we'll be making some more videos as well. Um, but that pretty much ends this video. Thank you for your time. Bye.